All right, we're going to paint this leaf using my custom Procreate brushes. Uh, this is a uh, test for me, this video, and I'd like to get people's feedback on the brushes, see how it goes, uh, sort of a walkthrough on recording an iPad screen versus recording myself painting with real watercolors. So I hope it goes well. <clears throat> so this is the uh, subject that um, is a leaf I picked up off the street here in Costa Rica while I'm here, and I painted it yesterday, and now I'm going to paint it again with you. So uh, the first thing you can see, we've got this leaf here and click on the layers here. I will have included this uh, sketch for you. So we'll start from scratch with the leaf. So one of the first things that we will do is we're going to get a reference picture of the leaf, which I would have also sent to you. And you can see it automatically goes to the canvas section. So you're going to click on image. Um, you'll have to have put this in your photos library because it wants to import it from your photos. Uh, I don't believe it gives you an option to record or import it from files I've tried before, which is a bit frustrating, but import image. Okay, and here's the leaf. All right, so you can see the it's not exactly the same, but uh, watercolor never is. In gen general, what we have is we've got lighter colors and we've got darker colors, and we're focusing on the different values, like the dark value on the side of the stem here. I'm certainly not gonna paint all these tiny little stem bits, by all means, if you want to do that, go ahead. Uh, so how my brushes work is essentially what I try to do is make brushes that look like watercolor painting when they're dry, when it's dry. So watercolor painting isn't just soft, wet washes. There's hard edges, there's soft edges, and there's lots of different characteristics to it. So I've tried to make brushes that encompass all of these characteristics. And I've done a lot of research. I've studied what other people have done. And... Um, I found some, but I always found things that I didn't quite like about them, like either the edges were too hard or they were too soft, and I'm continually tweaking them. So this is my very basic sample pack. Uh, so you can see we've got a bunch of watercolor brushes up at the top here. They all have kind of funny names. Uh, I haven't really gone through and renamed them all yet. The main ones that we're going to be using um, in this are, oops, there's one that's over here. So it's Paul Primary 2. Um, these will all be in the set that I sent you by themselves. Uh, so it'll be Paul Primary 2, and then there'll be the base watercolor 1, 1. <laughs> Essentially, it's me copying the brush and changing it and copying it, and it just keeps those names. Uh, and then the big, beautiful blends. Um, you'll see down here I've made a lot of different stamps and things like that. Uh, which I'll send you, the, whatever I use in this I will send you. These are essentially paintings that I've made photographed, converted them into brushes. It's sort of a long, tedious process for each one, but uh, I don't really use them that much. But I noticed a lot of other people did, and so I started uh, playing around with them and seeing how I can improve on them and such like that. So generally, that's the just the brushes. And so we're going to go to the first brush here, Paul Primary 2. Oops. And um, what we're going to do with this brush is, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our reference picture, and we're going to find like the lighter area of the leaf. So just like in regular watercolor painting, we are going to paint from lighter to dark for the most part, with a few exceptions. Uh, you want to make the brush so that you can, you know, you want to fill as much of an area as possible, but you also, um, whoops, I go to a new layer here underneath, and there, we're good now. Um, okay, stop it. So if the brush is too big, you you know it's going to overflow in that area there which we don't want the brush is too small it's going to take forever to fill up okay now that's important because with this brush if i lift it up i'm going to get like streaky marks over top of streaky marks which is fine we do get the same thing in watercolor painting so they are very much like regular you know painting in watercolor imagine the water dried and then you put another layer over top you're going to get another layer over top uh, so what we want to be able to do for our base layers, we want to fill in as much as possible. Um, and, and like I always say in real watercolor paint, you make the brush as large as you can, you know, use the largest size brush to be able to control, you know, to get the most amount of control that you can. So fill it in as much as you possibly can. So I'm going to go around and if you go over the edge there, so let's say I go way over here, don't worry because we can erase that, which is a really nice feature in, uh, in using digital watercolors. You have an undo and you have an eraser and you have all kinds of cool neat trips that tricks and tips. Now you can leave a few little areas if you like for uh, you know like holes in the leaf or whatnot. So you see I've got a couple in here. 
I'm not going to put one there. I'll put it down here and try to keep them away from the uh, stem area, which you'll see why later, just because it looks funny. Um, and then you end up having to fix it. So basically all we're doing is we're going over the first layer here and we're just filling in the entire leaf there. Okay, uh, this color is a bit pale, but whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna grab an eraser and I'm gonna erase this over here. Oops, I'm gonna make a, my eraser. Uh, I like to erase with uh, the same one I do my inking with, which is the syrup brush. And these are, this is the standard uh, brush set that comes with Procreate. So it's just, uh, just a solid eraser. It's easy to control. And I'm gonna erase over top of that, like so. So I'm filming on location here. So if uh, for whatever reason you hear somebody jump in a pool in the background or a little kid scream, I'm staying at an Airbnb that has like a shared kind of common area. and It can get noisy right outside the window here. Um, the other thing too is I'm using batteries as opposed to being plugged in like I normally am when I'm recording. So if my camera shuts off and I start again, well, that's why. Okay, so I've got a base layer down. I've gone around and I've recorded, uh, sorry, recorded. I've erased all the uh, extra area bits there that I didn't want to have. Um, yeah, so now we're ready for the next step. So when we're looking at the uh, what the next step will be, um, if you want to, you can, you know, go over and uh, put another, you know, fill in any areas like that, and you can smudge them. Uh, the problem with smudging is, when you look at the brushes that I made, they have grain in them, just like a pigment would have grain. So if you are on your, um, if you smudge it, you're moving that grain. It will work. Oh, I think I just had the brush too small. These, the brushes are all set to be maximum size. I like to paint with big brushes in real life. So I make all the brushes to be kind of maximum size. Um, it just, so there I've gone and moved it around. And if you zoom in, this is a very light color, so it doesn't really show that well, but you'll see that the grain is gone or, or basically out of focus kind of thing, like blurred. Um, it, it doesn't matter if you're outside the lines, the leaf shape is, you know, it's a relative shape. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so now we will move back to our, um, so we're gonna keep with the Big Beautiful Blends brush. And now let's go back over here to our reference picture and we'll pick a different color, like one of the yellows there. And now with the Big Beautiful Blend brush, how that brush works is um, you can press down and you'll see it kind of spreads out. Just like imagine if real watercolor, you're holding your brush down, you're moving more and more water around and it kind of spreads it out and pushes it around and, and whatnot, and it gives that effect, okay? Uh, but what we're gonna do instead of just painting on is I wanna be able to go around the edges. So one of the nice things about Procreate is we can do is we can make a clipping mask. So we'll clip on here, clip on clipping mask. Whoops, sorry. We need to make a new layer first, new layer. And now I'll make a clipping mask. So what that's gonna do is everything that's on this layer, it will only paint where, the, where we've got an image on this layer. So if I take my clipping mask brush, I'm gonna make this a bit brighter and I go over here, nothing will happen. But as soon as I come up here, it will go where there is uh, paint. However, it's only, it's going to work, you know, depending on how dark this is underneath, like it's, it's very light, this color. So it's very, it's relative to that. So you see how it's almost like, essentially what we're getting now, is we're getting a light, very light wash. If I were to use this brush, say for example, on a new layer, you'll see the difference between painting all over top of the clipping mask, which is this layer, which is very light, grainy, um, you know, different muted areas, just like it would be using, say, a buff titanium and real watercolor painting. So now if I'm on a different layer, like a plain normal layer, non clipping glass layer, you can see it, it's still very light, but it, uh, it's much clearer. So we can now go around and we can use different, whoops, get rid of that other layer. Actually, we'll leave it because we'll use it, but, and now see here, I come into the edge here and I'm pushing up. So I'm getting these kind of watercolory looks and feels to it. This is one of my favorite brushes that I made, this big beautiful blend brush. See what, see how they, it reacts to that. So just like in real watercolor, what happens in real watercolor is when you put clean water or a wash, you're basically pushing the pigments, like little grains of sand around. So this is kind of doing that. That's what this brush is mimicking. So it's like having a heavily 
loaded brush with lots of water on it. And uh, you know now it's very easy to do because we've got this clipping mask and it's not going to go over areas that we don't have paint or even if it does, it, it doesn't matter. It's not going to get on there. So we can basically take different leaf colors. Um, you can pick them from the painting or you can just sort of make them up as you go, like this kind of an orangey ready leaf. If you want to try one of the stamps, for example, you could say take, we'll take this one here, my watercolor mark, and for these, they're set to either have a pressure with the pencil or no pressure with your finger. So if you take your finger and you touch it on, it's going to put it on at sort of at 100%. Now, before we do that, another thing we could do is we could go back to our layers, we can make another layer, make that also a clipping mask. So now these are still, you know, when you see them over here, they're still related to that one down there. So I can take my finger, I can plop it on, and when I have it on its own layer now, I can move this around. You can see how it changes there like that. So these all, this still, again, this image, or the brush, has grain in it, just like a regular, like, watercolor paint would. Like, it's uh, different textures, and some are more grainy than others. We'll do that again, make another layer. If you put it in, if you make a new layer from in between, it will automatically do the clipping mask thing, so you can make however many you like. So now you see we've got a nice cool uh, watercolor look there. Turn it around over here like this. There. So that's kind of cool. Now, you know, you'll end up with a whole bunch of them, so you can always uh, sort of grab them all together and pinch, and then they'll all go back to their same layer. Now, let's say, for example, you um, think, oh, that's too strong there, that area there. You can come back here, you can grab this other brush, the other one here that we're going to use, the base watercolor brush. And what this brush does is it's sort of like, imagine a wash with a grainy or pigmented uh, watercolor. So we'll pick our color that's closest to it. We'll adjust our brush size relatively to what we want. Keep the opacity relatively low so you don't get like huge like solid effects there. And now we can make our hard edge a lost edge. So it doesn't have to be either or, it can be one or the other. And of course, if you wanted to do that before, we'll go back to before we merged our layers there, whoops. Um, we could just on that particular layer, we can use the same brush Go back to the Paul watercolor, the base watercolor brush. We'll set our opacity lower, we'll lower our size, and you can just erase it as you like. So you can do it that way as well. So I'm using basically the same thing. I've still got some, you know, it's like, so this area here had lots of water, and then this area here kind of dried like that. I hope that makes sense. Uh, and you can just keep going as you like with that and add in, you can use that for your colors. You can use the base watercolor brush um, on its own. So I'll put in some green color there. Keep in mind we're on the clipping mask, so it's not going to be very dark. Oops, we can also up the opacity. There, now we've got some greens in there. And see how loose this is being very, like, easy peasy. You know, not really stressing about it too much. Um, okay. So that's the gist of that. You can keep going as many times as you like. But for now, we will uh, merge these layers here. And we'll go on to the next part. So we'll go up to our new layer. If you don't have this layer, make a new layer. And now we're going to do the uh, stem here. So if we look at the stem, basically the way the light's hitting it, so we've got a dark side, we've got a light side in the middle, and then sort of a medium side on the other. So we've got a little highlight going down the middle of the stem, and we've got a shadow from the stem, and then some green on the other side. So if we pick our shadow part, we'll move over there, you can see you've got a nice darker green color, or by all means, just pick a green color that you like, make it relatively dark, whatever you prefer. So for this, we're going to lower down our opacity maybe about halfway. We're going to make our brush nice and small. I'm going to zoom in. Um, and we basically want to follow the line here, and we're just going to actually make it even smaller. And I'm going to increase the opacity. Just get it so that, there we go, we got a nice... We don't want it to look like a pencil line too much, um, but we do want to be able to make it a defined kind of shape. 
Okay, so now we should have something similar to this. If you really zoom in, you can see this is a pretty messy uh, line here that I've got. You can always come back here to your eraser, and if at this stage you can tidy it up, if you like, just your opacity, and make it a little sharper if you like. We're going to have more green on this side anyways, as you can see there, we've kind of got like a, you know, a less uh, muted green there. So by all means, we can do it later or we can do it now. Doesn't really matter. Uh, and there's a couple ways we can address that. So if we were to put this whole stem on one layer, then you know it would be we would be limited to what we can erase and what we can change and whatnot, um, which is fine. It's just, it's just harder. I don't really like making things harder if they don't have to be. Um, if we make it on another layer, like let's say we make another layer underneath. Oops, there we go. So now we've got our stem layer here, and we've got another layer underneath. If I put say this lighter green underneath here on this layer. Well, then I can adjust them individually and don't have to worry about um, being really finicky or, or redrawing. You could do the whole entire painting on one layer if you want. It's just going to be a lot more work. So again, now that we've got two layers here, uh, you can do that. Having two layers does make things like this easier. So there now I uh, tightened up my, my shadow. Another thing I can also do is instead of, you know, I, I'm going over and over it again, I can make my shadow, I can basically just come over here, oops, sorry, wrong one, to my hue, saturation, and brightness, and I can just darken it. I can increase the saturation, and I can darken the shadow, which is very handy again. So look how dark that shadow is. It's probably too dark, so I can undo that. Um, but just a handy trick to have. Uh, so you can go back, we'll just clean this up. You can do this now or later. It just makes it easier to uh, to see what you're painting underneath if you if you do it now. Okay. So I'm just tidy that up with the eraser. Now I'm going to go back to my layer below, and I'm going to pick a color that's more green. I don't really like that pale kind of green, so I'm going to make mine a bit more green, green, greeny. It's very important that you learn all the correct terms, such as green, green, and greeny. And essentially, this is just like a colored pencil almost, right? So you don't, not like our first one, where we uh, had to go over it all in one layer. We can basically just draw this in, and it's, I need one of those gloves. This is um, essentially making, you know, like uh, a regular wash brush, like if you had a wash and you're putting a wash on, but the uh, painter you're using was fairly grainy or pigmented, however you want to call it. Okay, so now you can see we've got a shadow. It's starting to come together. It's starting to look like a leaf. So we can either, the next step we can do is we've got this color here. We've got this brush here. We can put in our other uh, little mini stems along the side here. Oops, and for that, I'm going to slower my opacity a bit. So I want them to be fairly gradual. I don't want to have like really hard lines. So you're just basically building up the value here. Now, if you zoom in and you find that you're getting like really streaky lines, then just either it just increase your brush size a bit. We're still on the same layer. You make them a little bit uh, wider than your pencil line, like maybe three of the, the pencil lines there, because we're going to want to put in a little highlight and another, you know, if you want to add a little shadow, you can. But I think the highlight, when I did it, I just put in a little highlight over top, kind of like using gouache, so to speak. Okay, <clears throat> so now we can see we've got our lines on there uh, for our veins. One thing I want to point out that I forgot to mention at the beginning is you'll notice there's no paper texture here underneath our watercolor painting. I quite often paint on hot press paper, which doesn't um, 
really have any texture. So when I was making my brushes, one thing that was important to me is I wanted them to have actual mimic real watercolor paint as much as possible. And now my background is I've, I've been a watercolor painter for almost 15 years now. And um, in that time, I also made and sold my own watercolor paint. So I really studied the pigments and how they act. And I think that's really helped me in making these brushes. So when you're looking at the, the, uh, the painter, if you're wondering why there's no paper texture, that's why. Of course, by all means, you can certainly use a paper texture and I will have them available and I'll show you how to do that. It's a very simple process um, and I, I do have them. I just find it takes away from the painting and I really like the simplicity of not having to do it. It makes it a bit muddier, um, which uh, is something that dry, which I you know try really hard to avoid in regular watercolor painting. So I don't know why I would uh, want to do it in here. So go through, refine your lines, and then we will... Uh, move on to the next step when you're ready and you feel like, hey, I'm, I'm good to go here. And then we're gonna put our little highlight on, on there and we will also put it along the, um, the smaller veins as well. So just make sure these are, I'm gonna make these a little bit thicker just so that you know the highlight that we're talking about is, is obvious. And then we'll do some more work on the base layer and then that's it, easy peasy. Okay, so we have all of our little veins done here, and I'll just uh, do a few little touch-ups and whatnot. Now we've got those there. So let's put some more patterns and different shapes on. Like we'll take a look at our leaf here and we'll pick out some of the other colors. They're all very subtle. Along the stem here, we've got this uh, kind of off green color that kind of runs on the stem. So let's look at our layers and where the stem is that we did. We've got all our veins there. I just squished those two together. So if you look here, we can turn that off and all the veins are on one layer. So we really don't need the pencil layer anymore because we've got all the other ones there. That'll help us by turning that off to <clears throat> see what we need to do and what we don't need to do. It's kind of distracting with the lines there because it's much more defined. So we'll turn the lines off. We'll leave that off for now. And we will move on to making some more shapes and patterns. We are going to make a new layer above it, but we're not going to make it a clipping mask. What we're going to do is we're going to use a stamp brush. So I'm going to include this brush with you here. And this is essentially like a watercolor stain. And we're going to tap it on there and we'll see. You can see the uh, shape of it there. And it's got like a gradated edge. So you can turn by grabbing the green handle here and turn. We can scale this up and we will move it along the edge there. And now we can just duplicate this layer and move, whoops, move the duplicated one down. Again, duplicate it. Grab our select tool, which is set to uniform and trend whichever there and we'll move that down okay and let's do one more duplicate grab our select tool move that down so you can see all of a sudden now we have our uh, kind of a very similar style like basically a faded off green area where the leaf kind of comes in and folds in like that so we'll leave that like that and now we can take those layers and squish them together. You don't have to do that, but it's just easier. Um, now we're going to go back to our brush here and we'll go back to the base watercolor brush. And now we can zoom in and we can increase the size a little bit. And just some of the areas where it overlapped there, we can just kind of make some of them, like we don't want to have like a repeated pattern, you know, we don't want it obvious that, you know, we use that uh, stamp brush and had a repeated pattern. So we'll switch this up a little bit. We'll grab that big, beautiful blends brush and we can push this down over there. Oops. And if it's not right, just maybe lower the pass, lower the size a bit and play around with it a little bit until you get the uh, size and effect that you want to get. This is making like a water stain as it goes. 
pressing fairly hard with this brush. The harder you press, the more it's going to have that effect. Now, obviously, we don't want it to look like that because those are funny kind of shapes. So we can take our try the smudge erase brush and we'll just go along the edge there. And see, now we're pushing back. Imagine we've got like clean water on our brush. I'm going to lower the opacity here a bit. So this is too much. And we just want to, as if we're pushing clean water in. So when I'm painting with watercolor paint, I do this a lot. So I'll put paint down and then I will go along the edge of it or touch it with clean water to spread it out and just loosen it up a bit. And when on the note of loosening up, try to keep your brush strokes as loose as possible. Now you can be more refined if you want in this stage here. Essentially you're trying to make it look like watercolor paint. Okay, so now we've kind of got a big water stain down there in the middle. I'm going to grab our uh, base brush. So now we're just kind of adding in, like we look here in our reference picture, those, it's kind of like those green stains kind of come down there. So now we've got our stem layer. We can leave those separate for now, just in case we want to make some changes later. Uh, and then over top of this, we can see here, we've got essentially, we look down the edge here, we've got some highlights. So you would be mean, if you were doing this in traditional watercolor, this would maybe be your gouache or a gel pen or something like that, whatever you're using. So I'm just gonna go over top of the leaf here, pick up that color from the reference picture and make my brush size nice and small. And now on this new layer, so my layer, you wanna make sure your layer is above your stems because you want to put this over top. Okay. Now we've got some more colors in our, um, I'm going to merge this down because it's, uh, I shall merge all those together. We've got more colors. We've got a lot more yellow and we've got some browns and we've got some other colors in there. Also on our stem here, I think we've got a bit too much of the green in there. So I'm going to grab, instead of using the eraser brush and taking it away, I'm gonna use my blending brush, my big beautiful blend brush, and I'm gonna paint it in. That way I'm not losing all my grain and stuff like that. So what I did is I selected some of the color, like the yellow color, like the base color here right beside the green. So instead of erasing it back to that, I'm basically painting on that layer with the same color. And in doing so, I'm getting like these watermark kind of uh, brush strokes in there by pushing, um, essentially in real watercolor painting, what I'd be doing is using water to push these pigments forward there. Uh, when, when I do have, and that kind of creates some water stains. So you can use other colors too, like if you want to add in some of your yellowy colors there and whatnot. Okay, <clears throat> so we've got some different colors in there. We can add in a few more if we like. But instead of just putting them on, I'm gonna use uh, some of these stamps here and give it a bit more of an effect there. So I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna make a new layer, I'm gonna go underneath, or maybe actually I'll go over top, I'll move this. No, I'll leave it underneath, okay. Now, I'll try that again. I'm gonna make it a bit more bold of a color. And I'm going to make this a clipping mask so that I can go to the edge like that. And now you can see we've got this kind of water stain there. Whoops. Actually, I made my... I'm going to come underneath to make a clipping mask again automatically.
Okay. Our leaf is starting to look pretty good. At the top here, we've kind of got a little, uh, what would you call that? Like the tip of the stem, I guess. So we're going to use uh, the base watercolor brush just because it gives us a nice gradual look. We're going to choose a brown color and we'll just come over the edge here. We're going to make a new layer on top and we're going to follow, whoops, get off of there. Make it small and we'll follow the stem line. Uh, there, like that. And we're just basically a nice solid dark color. See where the light is coming this way, so we've got a shadow there. Okay. Getting very close. Now I'd like to see the edges just a bit harder on there, so I'm going to merge down my splotches onto that one base layer there. And I'm going to, let's take a look here. I'm gonna turn this off for a second. Actually what I'll do is I'll make these into a new group. And now I can turn off that whole group and we can take a look at our other one here. So what we've got is we've got some of the more burnt kind of edges around there. We've got a larger highlight area, so that I think makes a big difference on this uh, brush than on the other one. So we can compare that to that. We'll put on the new group, turn the old one off, yeah. So our highlight area is uh, more pronounced, as is our shadow area. So let's just merge all this together. Not that one, no, nope, not you. Okay, these ones we want to merge together. There we go. And let's make our shadow a little bit more defined, and then we'll make our highlight a little bit more defined. Okay. Now, another thing that we had on our other brush was we had some of our um, edges here around the white spots were darker. So if we go here and we make another layer above our base layer, make it a clipping mask, and now we can choose a darker color, like a dark brown, for example, and we can go over top around. I'm just basically lightly going around these edges here. but it won't go in the white area because it's the clipping mask. Do some also along the edge of our leaf. Just darken it up a little bit. Okay, so now let's merge all this together. So we're going to make some adjustments. We're gonna give our leaf a bit of a punch so we're going to come over here to this little magic wand um, thingy, click on curves. We're going to put a little dot in the middle there. You see that lightens up the mid-tones. And then we come over here, we've got our shadows. So if we bring our shadows, we're increasing the contrast. You can see how it gets paler if we go up like that. If we come over here, we're going to increase the contrast. So we're making it, giving it a bit more punch. We can bring this down just a hair there, and I'll push it up a bit. Not eh, too much. There we go. Done. And now we'll click it again. We're going to go hue, saturation, and brightness. And we're just going to pump up saturation a little bit. And we will darken it down a little bit. And voila. So now if we look at what we just did there, we use two fingers to undo. You can see the before. See how much paler that is? Now we're going to go back. So we, there's our curves. And there's the hue, saturation, and brightness. So by all means, like, play around with that. Don't feel like... You know, you've uh, got to keep it a certain way or whatever. But essentially, in a nutshell, that is our leaf done and ready to go. So if you're not 100% sure where you're at, take a look at my painting. Take a look at the reference photo and look at your painting and say, OK, what stands out that isn't that I don't like? What part of this can be different? What could I change? So, for example, I remember here I went back and I looked and I said, oh, you know what? On my original one, the highlight was much stronger. And again, it is a little bit dull. I could probably make that highlight stronger again, and I could probably put more highlight over top of these smaller stems. 
but you get the idea and using those very few brushes you've got some really neat effects. One last thing I will show you here that I will include this brush as well as I've got me a little splatter brush here. So again we will make a new layer over top, we'll make it a clipping mask, that way if it goes off to the edge it doesn't matter. We'll use our finger to apply this brush and just tap it on. And you'll see we've got some paint splatters. I'm not a big fan of you know people just plopping paint on for the sake of doing it. I find it really annoying when people do that, but in this case it actually, you look at the leaf, it actually has these kind of effects in it. So adjust the size until you get it to where you like. And put them on. And it's done. Now you can duplicate this layer if you want, or you can put it down again. But duplicating is just easier. Make sure you just switch it up a bit so that it doesn't look like it's duplicated. There. Et voila.